This week's question is all about the Delta variant. Is it really the most transmissible variant we've had and why? And the questions we've been having are mainly around why it's affected the UK more than other places, given that the WHO has estimated that about at least 50 countries have the variant. So first thing to realise is that this virus reacts differently in different situations and different environments. Every country is different, has a different population mix, urban, rural, different densities, and uh, also different climates. And so we don't know yet which um, level of humidity or temperature this particular virus likes. Now, the other thing that really sparked this uh, increase recently with the Delta virus in the UK was the fact that all at the same time, many people were returning from India and Pakistan uh, infected because they'd been visiting relatives just at the time uh, then there was a real uh, rapid peak in cases there. So many people were coming back, they were quarantining and they may have been quarantining in a situation which we now know is not particularly appropriate with other members of their family and multi-generational uh, households who hadn't uh, been traveling at all. Some of them would have been young, got infected asymptomatically. Uh, they hadn't been traveling, so they were allowed to go out and uh, meet other people and transmit the virus. And so very soon this, this spread very rapidly in, in this dense, uh, these dense urban areas. And that's why we think there was this particular problem that hit the UK, plus the fact that we're very good at sequencing these genes before anyone else. And so there may well be other countries uh, that are likely to have this same problem soon, just haven't really detected it as such. Now, um, the other real question related to this was, uh, what is it about this Delta variant that makes it uh, highly transmissible? And of course, it's early days, we don't know the full story yet, but let's look at what we do know. Just recently, Public Health England estimated that 90% of all the uh, current cases now carry the Delta variant. Uh, and these are numbers over, over 40,000 individuals. And we do know that it's associated with at least 60% greater transmission uh, in households than the previous alpha variant, uh, the one that uh, we originally discovered uh, in, the, in England. So if we add that to the fact that that um, alpha variant, which used to be called the Kent variant, was, was about 40% more transmissible than the original one uh, detected in Wuhan, that's where we get this figure of about 100% twice as uh, transmissible. Now, obviously understanding why it does this uh, is tricky, but there are some uh, great virologists looking at this, and one of them is Wendy Barclay from Imperial College, and she has been looking at the virus and thinks of these two mutations on the spike protein that could be really quite crucial in changing the way that the virus survives uh, in the airways so that it is able to replicate faster. And so this means that it actually uh, produces more virus uh, more uh, rapidly and therefore increases what we call the viral load and therefore um, for the equivalent other one you're actually producing more virus particles. The alternative explanation which is equally valid is that these mutations have made the virus just uh, stickier than its predecessor so that uh, a smaller amount can stick into your airways and fight off the uh, local immune cells and gain a foothold so that when 
uh, you meet someone uh, who has even low levels of the virus, you might pick up a small fragment and whereas before your immune system would have dealt with it or it wouldn't have stuck in your, in your body, this new variant is uh, stickier, will stay there long enough to fight its way in and, and start replicating. So this means that uh, you, you might be getting symptoms with a much smaller level of the, the virus than uh, we saw before. So both these explanations are equally plausible and gives you some idea about what we're dealing with. And there are some suggestions, but really the data really aren't clear yet that it might be causing uh, a greater uh, risk of, of hospitalization. But um, that's really only in the uh, unvaccinated and that's still uh, not yet proven. Now, the good news is that the most recent Public Health England analysis of over 14,000 cases has shown that people have been double vaccinated with either the Pfizer-BioNTech or the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine have 96% or 92% protection against getting any symptoms of the virus. And those that do get symptoms, uh, we've shown uh, in our most recent data as well from the Zoe app that it is milder and of shorter duration. So um, this means that in general, in this, this current Delta epidemic, deaths will be much less than we used to. Admissions should be uh, lower. Uh, partly because cases are also uh, much younger and so get less, less severe disease. Uh, and so while it's not all gloom and doom, we do have to remember, of course, that you don't really want to get Delta virus because uh, long COVID is something that does affect uh, people of all ages. So it's very important to get double vaccinated as soon as you can. And it's great to see that we've reduced the 12 week window now down to eight and in some places whether you can get it you can get it earlier than that so do go out there get your second vaccine protect yourself against the delta variant thanks for these great questions